Hi guys, got an FS55R steel line trimmer here. And I wanted to be able to run the power broom attachment, which I have done successfully this year. I borrowed my father's power broom attachment and ran it on this trimmer. And I noticed that it, it seems like it's got an, a wrapping inside of the, the one inch tube. Come to find out, uh, this wound wire wound drive shaft is not meant for running that piece of equipment, that attachment. It uh, binds up with torsion inside the shaft and vibrates and rattles and it will wear out the tube or break that shaft because of the, uh, the vibration. And that's straight from the steel uh, technical support line. I called them and asked them if there was a tube or anything that I could actually get to put on this. That would make it a straight line shaft just like the commercial grade machines they said no well the power on this saw or this trimmer is perfectly acceptable for running that broom so i didn't want to accept that so i went ahead and purchased uh you go on onto steel's website for the power broom attachment and it'll tell you the acceptable models and uh, one of them, I think, was the FS85 or 86. I can't remember now. Uh, so I actually went on eBay and purchased the tube assembly. And it came with the shaft, the straight line shaft here, pardon me, <coughs> which is a solid shaft. So you can see the big difference there. So I actually went and got that. And I pulled the tube out of the standard tube out and I noticed there's some holes here. Well, this, the solid shaft off the larger commercial machine, it's a slight, slight bit longer than this shaft is. And so is the drive shaft. Uh, this hole did not exist. And that hole is actually somewhere in this range. So there's clearly a different mounting point for the set screw that's underneath here that keeps that tube in line and from twisting in there. Once it's all snugged up, it doesn't move at all. I guess you would call that the locking screw. So I took and I drilled the hole uh, in that shaft to meet up the same as this one. So it sits perfectly fine in this assembly. Now, the only difference, the only problem that I had is with the stick out for this shaft, this drive shaft ends up being like 5 16 or about 5 eighths of an inch I believe is roughly from the end of the tube and that that way when it bottoms out in there in the bottom of this gearbox you might be able to see the bearing in there just a little bit that it's bottomed out in the shaft and the shaft is splined or uh, notched just beyond where that reaches so it's back into here somewhere but that sits way up in here so that said, I didn't want to cause any problems because this one was much shorter. As you can see here, it's got some grease on it. So I actually had to cut the cut it a little bit shorter so it wouldn't bind and uh, with the stick out. And I also made sure that this, once it's seated in there, sits back in there just as far. So it engages the same amount as that one in whatever tool it's sitting in. So it's about five, uh, five eighths of an inch. So I did have to regrind the square back beyond uh, where, where it was. And I only cut off just a small amount. Uh, it really wasn't a mu much of that shaft. I think, uh, there you go. So it was maybe, if that's a quarter inch, it's really not much. So that's what makes it work. And now I can put a power broom attachment on here and not worry about, uh, you know, compatibility with breaking the shaft. And I mean, I think I spent maybe $40, 30 to $35, something like that on the tube assembly from eBay. So I uh, really don't think it's much of an investment. The biggest investment's buying that stupid power broom head for like 300 and something dollars. Uh, if you get it new, if you're lucky to find one used for much less than that, they're not giving them away, that's for sure. So uh, not a very long video, but uh, you know, if you're crafty enough, uh, Maybe somebody else that's uh, got a residential grade machine that doesn't want to destroy a perfectly good uh, shaft, which I can always convert back to that if I ever get rid of this and decide to get a bigger machine. 
uh, you know, for entry level purposes. I think I, I picked this steel trimmer up for, uh, I probably got uh, around $50 for the unit used. Didn't run. I put a, a carburetor on it and uh, that was it. Tuned it and then found out after the fact that I couldn't use it at least reliably with that uh, spun shaft on there. So spun wire shaft isn't meant for it. So I decided I'd try it, try my hand at making it work. So we'll see. Worst case scenario, I destroy it and I'm out less than a hundred bucks anyway. I've already got another line trimmer, so it's not going to hurt me there. But the steel is a nice piece of equipment. So if this helps you, you know, great. If not, you know, that's great too. It's uh, it's just something I feel it worth sharing for maybe the next guy that's uh, wondering why stuff doesn't fit. They designed it not to, but it's not like you can't make it work. It's very, very simple stuff. Just drill that hole in there to meet up where it's supposed to be. Make sure that your stick out's the same on the end for the proper implements and good to go. All right, guys, have a good one.